good afternoon. Uh, once again, I say good afternoon, my students. Uh, you are welcome to Bio 101. General good afternoon. Bio. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. You're welcome, afternoon. sir. Yes, sir. Thank, you are thank welcome you, sir. to today's uh, facilitation. Uh, as you know, my name has been on your message. I'm Professor C.D. Mwani, Chris Mwani, a professor of University of Nigeria and Suka. So we are going to go into the course straight away without wasting of our time on uh, Bio 101. So today we'll be looking at uh, living organisms, living organisms. And then we say that living organisms are those organisms that have life. They have life in them. Uh, it's different from non-living non organisms. Non-living organisms do not have life in them, but living organisms have life in them. You are a living organism. A, a, a plant is a living organism. A lizard is a living organism. Um, uh, even a, a spider is a living organism because they have life in them. So unlike non-living organisms, non-living organisms do not have life in them. That table you are staying on doesn't have life in them. Even your computer is not a living organism. That desk or that stone is not a living organism. The air we breathe is not living organism. Even the water we take is not living organism. So today we are looking at living organisms. And then we look at uh, certain characteristics of these living organisms. What do these living organisms have that make them different from non-living organisms? So we look at characteristics of living organisms. Those of us that did biology in secondary school, you must have had that. But a way of starting this by 101, because we are combining people from other departments, not only biology, computer, and other related departments, we want to move down to level one. So let's look at characteristics of uh, living organisms. One is movement. Any living organism must move. They, they move from, some move from one place to another. So there's degree of movement in living organisms. So if the organism doesn't move, we suspect that that organism may not be a living organism. Another one, living organisms feed. They take in food materials that sustain the cells. So feeding is, nutrition is one of the characteristics of living organisms. You need to feed. You, move, you, you take in something to sustain you. If you don't feed now for four days, <laughs> You, the, 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 your body will not be the same thing now. You are robust now because you ate in the morning. You probably have eaten in the, in the uh, yesterday night. Probably you have eaten uh, yesterday afternoon. And probably you must have eaten today. So that makes you to live. So living organisms uh, feed. Then another one is that uh, living organisms also carry out the process of excretion. As you take in food material, you remove waste materials. So removal of waste product of metabolism is also a characteristic for living organisms. Waste product of metabolism like what? Uh, carbon uh, four oxide. Waste product of metabolism and uh, other waste material, water, they get out of your body. So uh, sweat, get out of your body. So removal of this waste product of metabolism is a, a, a excretion, which is a characteristic of living organisms. Another characteristic of living organisms is reproduction, ability to perpetuate. Organisms that have to give rise, uh, bring back uh, 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 other organisms to live. So if you don't have uh, uh, these uh, uh, living organisms, then you cannot uh, reproduce. So organisms need to reproduce so that they can produce other organisms. They can produce other young ones. That's the reason why you marry. That's the reason why you marry, in order to produce uh, children. So children that will perpetuate, that, that will stay in your family when you have gone. So these are some of the things that uh, 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 are characteristics of living organisms. That is why even a, a mosquito need to reproduce. Mosquito need to lay eggs in order to produce more mosquito that will replace the old mosquito when the uh, elder mosquito is gone. And that is even the reason why rats, ordinary rats, produce. They produce young ones because they know that the mother rat will one day die. So the younger ones will uh, uh, replace them. Another one is irritability or something coordination. You see, any living organism has to what? Respond to stimulus, respond to external, external stimuli. And that's why if somebody brings a pin to pin you on your body, you respond immediately because you are a living organism. Because you feel, you feel even the environment. If somebody asks you to go and stay under the sun from morning to night, you will not like it because you will be respond, responding to what? Heat 
and light, intensity of sunlight. So uh, uh, irritability or coordination is one of the things that is uh, one of the characteristics of living all this. Another one is death. As you are living, you must die. That is the thing. Any living organism must one day die. Even you that is taking the lecture, one day you will no longer be in existence because our forefathers that live before us, they are no longer living. So these are some of the characteristics. I have not exhaust, uh, exhausted them. There are many, but uh, we use uh, an acronym, Mr. D. Niger, to, to summarize the characteristics of living organisms. M is for what? Movement. R is for reproduction. N is for uh, nutrition. I is for what? Irritability. G is for what? Growth. P is for what? Excretion. And R is for reproduction. And D is for death. So we use this acronym, Mr. D. Niger, to represent the activities of living organisms. And I hope that this lecture has exposed you so that you now know living organisms and non-living organisms. And then the characteristics of living organisms. Look, the, 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 the non-living organisms do not have these characteristics. Non-living organisms do not respond to external stimuli. Non-living organisms do not reproduce. Non-living organisms do not uh, uh, feed. Non-living organisms do not carry out the process of uh, excretion. Non-living organisms do not even die. So it is only the living organisms that uh, have these characteristics, which you have uh, listed. So today we have been able to understand living organisms and non-living organisms. Then can you differentiate? If you now say, give us 10 differences between living organisms and non-living organisms, you'll be able to do that. I, I, I hope you can do that very well. If you be able to differentiate between living organisms and non-living organisms, then you have been able to do justice to this, to this uh, facilitation. Now, we now move on to the next thing that we're going to do. And the next thing we're going to look at is called cells. What is a cell? A cell is the building block of an living organism. The building block of any living organism is what? The cell. Your body, you have cells, millions of cells in your body, but you may not realize that you have a cell. It's only when you somebody pitches you or takes out a, a little blood from you and put in a microscope and you view it, that is the time you realize that something we are saying. Look at a building, a complete a upstate. If you look at um, upstate now, you know, they use block, block on top of block, one block on top of another one. They, they, they complete the building. They use cement to cement it and use paint to paint it and then make it flashy. Then you think that that building is all like that. No, it is made up of basic units. So this basic unit of life is called what? A cell. The basic unit of life, the thing that make up, that put together to make up life is called what? Cell. Just like the basic unit of that upstate. The basic unit of any building is the block which you find in pieces. So that is how also you uh, talk of uh, animals or living organisms. So you have the basic unit of life, which is what called what? A cell. So all of us have cells and our cells are living. If your cell dies, then you are no longer living. For example, if you go and pull up a plant now, a, a vegetable now from the farm, leave it from morning to now, if you go back, that, that plant must have collapsed. Everything must have died. It would have been dried up because it is no longer living. It's no longer taking nutrients from the soil. And that is why it is not living. So that is why living things, uh, uh, cells, every living organism have what? Cells in them that make them to be living. And so we are going to look at cells today. We are going to look at the general structure of the cell. You see, the cell in animals are called animal cells. And the cells in plants are called plant cells. So you now have every animal has cells in them. Every plant has what cells in them. So cells in animals are called animal cells, while cells in plants are called plant cells. I hope you are following very well. Now, if you look at the structure or the shape of animal cell, it is different from the shape of a plant cell. Let's look at the shape of a, a plant cell first. You see, a plant cell has a definite shape and it is surrounded the outer covering of this uh, plant cell is called what cell wall cellular cell wall and then after the cellular cell wall then you have the cell membrane you have the middle lamella then after the middle lamella you have the cell membrane after the cell membrane then you now find the cytoplasm inside that cytoplasm you have the nucleus 
Then you have the nucleolus where the, the, the chromosomes are situated. Then inside this uh, uh, cytoplasm, you also have the, 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 the chloroplast or the chlorophyll. They are in the, in the, in the cytoplasm. You have the mitochondria. You have other cell inclusion like uh, the vacuum. This is something you find in what? In plant cell. Now, if you go to animal cell, you also have animal cell. But the animal cell sometimes do not have a definite shape because the outer membrane is covered by what? Cell membrane. Unlike in plants, where the outer membrane is called cellular cell wall. Because the outer membrane in plants is called cellular cell wall, that is why plants is very strong. You, you can touch a plant and the, the plant remains gidiba because it is very hard because it has what? Cellular cell wall. But if you touch your skin now, your skin is very soft. I want you to touch your skin. Your skin is very soft because the outer membrane of your cell is what cell membrane, not cellular cell, cell wall. So now, if you come to animal cell, the outer membrane is called uh, cell membrane. And now, after the cell membrane, you now have the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, you now have the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, you have the nucleolus, where you have the chromosomes, where you have the genes. Then, the other cell inclusion in animal cell, you now have uh, the the, of course, covering the nucleus is what you call the endoplasmic reticulum. And the endoplasmic reticulum may have ribosomes in there where protein synthesis takes place. Then you can also have other cell inclusions like the Golgi body, then the, 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 the mitochondria, which is uh, the powerhouse of the cell. You can also have the vacuum. But then the vacuum in animal cell is smaller than the vacuum in a plant cell. The vacuum in a plant cell is very large why the vacuum in animal cell is very small. So in animal cell, our, the vacuum is very small. So you have other inclusion like the lysosomes. They are all there in the, in the animal cell. So I've described the plant cell. I've described an animal cell. Then you can now, as a student, look at the structure of the plant cell and look at the structure of animal cell in our manual, in our reading material, so that you can draw it. Draw the plant cell, draw the animal cell. You must do that as an assignment. You have to draw a plant cell, you draw animal cell, and label them. You, I want you to label them fully using the method of biological labeling. Of course, the lines must be straight. Use your ruler as you like, as you, as you label them. And each of the label must touch the particular parts that you are labeling. So that is plant cell and that is animal cell. Very, very important. Plant cell are found in plants, why animal cells are found in what? Animals. So, but then what we have to do for us is uh, we want to look at the differences between a plant cell and animal cell. If it is possible, I want us to look at the differences between a plant cell and animal cell. Somebody is asking how you are going to submit the assignment. Don't worry, I will tell you soon. Later, I will tell you how you are going to submit the, 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 the animal cell. Somebody say he's new. What we are talking is by 101. We are talking by 101. Please, if you are new, just listen. We are discussing by 101. And we are now looking at the cell. The first thing we started is the living things. We have finished living things, characteristics of living things, uh, the difference between living things and non-living things. Now we are discussing the cell. And we are discussing the plant cell and animal cell. We have done the diagram of a plant cell and labeled it. We have done the diagram of animal cell and we have labeled it too. We want to look at the differences between plant cell and animal cell. That's the second assignment. So a plant cell and animal cell, you tablate and then give me the difference. One of the differences is one. A plant cell has what we call the cellular cell wall. That is the utmost covering, cellular cell wall. But animal cell has what cell, the utmost covering of animal cell is called cell membrane. Secondly, the plant cell has what we call the chlorophyll, which is used to manufacture food in the process called photosynthesis. And that's why plants manufacture food, why animals do not manufacture food. Because of this presence of chlorophyll, plants are autotrophs because they can manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis. And animals are heterotrophs. They cannot manufacture their own food because they depend on the food manufactured by the plant. So it is because of this chlorophyll present in the plant that the plant will be able to manufacture food. So the second difference is that Plant cell has chlorophyll, but animal cell do not have chlorophyll. Third difference is that plant cell has a definite shape, but animal cell do not have definite shape. 
Then another one is that uh, a plant cell, has, uh, animal cell has lysosomes, but the plant cell do not have uh, lysosomes. Uh, how many difference have I given you? I'll give you about uh, four or five differences between plant cell and animal cell. In your own, I want you to give me 10 differences between a plant cell and animal cell. Remember that plant cell also have middle lamella, which is the middle in the, is present in the plant cell. But animal cell do not have middle lamella at all. So these are what are present in plant cell and what is present in animal cell. So I want you to give me 10 differences between plant cell and animal cell. That is your assignment. 10 differences between plant cell and animal cell. The first assignment I gave you is to give me differences between living things and non-living things. Then the second assignment, I want you to give me the 10 differences between plant cell and animal cell. Now let's look at, we have looked at the differences. Can we see the similarities? Let's look at the similarities, things that are common in both plant cell and animal cell. Can you think one of the things that plant cell has and animal cell has? Yes, you can now, you can see. Look, both plant cell and animal cell, mm -hmm. they have what? Cell membrane. Both of them have cell membrane. Both plant cell and animal cell, they have cell membrane. Is that, yes, is a, is a, one of the similarities. And then both plants and animal cells, they have nucleus. Of course, you know that nucleus is the life wire of a cell. If you remove the nucleus, the cell will collapse. The cell will die. So whether you are talking of plant cell or whether you are talking of animal cell, both of them have what? Nucleus. So new presence of nucleus is one of the what? Things, uh, similarities between plant cell and animal cell. Things that are common in both of them. Another thing that is common in both of them is the cytoplasm. Whether you're talking of plant cell and animal cell, they all have what? Cytoplasm. And cytoplasm is that liquid place that is housing all those uh, other, uh, all these cell inclusions. Both plant cell and animal cell, they have what? Endoplasmic reticulum. They have endoplasmic reticulum. Both of them, it is present in them. Both of them also have ribosomes for protein synthesis. You see? So these are the things. Then both of them have mitochondria. Both of them have mitochondria. So, uh, which is the powerhouse of the cell. So mm -hmm. I've given you about seven, complete to 10. Give me 10 differences between plant cell and animal cell. And then I also want you as an assignment, third assignment, to draw a plant cell and label it and draw animal cell and label it. Don't worry, I'll tell you how, how you are going to submit the assignment. No, there's, you're not submitting it, submitting it now. You are going to carry it home, do it, and then I'll tell you how to submit it to me. So both plant cell and animal cell, they have a, a, a mitochondria. That is the powerhouse of the cell. So these are things that are common to plant cell and animal cell. So the, the third assignment is that we are going to draw plant cell and label it, and we are also going to draw animal cell and label it. So that is that. Then we move forward. Moving forward, we are going to look at uh, cell theory. Cell theory. Cell theory. So if I may ask you, yes, somebody say, is it two assignments? It's not only two. It's now, uh, yes, it is two assignments. The first assignment is the list, the differences between living things and non-living things. The second assignment is to what? Uh, draw plant cell and, and draw animal cell. The third assignment is to look at the difference between plant cell and animal cell. So these are some of the things that we are, are asking you to do. Okay, now the, uh, the common things, the, 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 the similarities, we have already mentioned the similarities. So let's now go to cell theory. Let's now go to cell theory. What is cell theory? You see, cell theory, there are some scientists that propose this cell theory, that propose what we call propounded the cell theory. They propounded the cell theory. So we're going to look at cell theory. What is cell theory? One, the cell theory states that all living organisms are made up of cells. Every living organism, whether plant or animal, including you, you are every living organism is made up of cell. That is the first cell theory. Cell theory, I said number one, 
that every living organism is made up of cell. Because in the exam, I will sell, I'll tell you to state the cell theory. Then you state it this way. The cell theory states that one, every living organism is made up of cell. That's number one. Then the second is that the cell theory states that a cell is the basic unit of life. Or the cell is the unit, basic unit of life. That's the second cell theory. And the third cell theory, the third cell theory states that a cell comes from a pre-existing cell. A cell comes from pre-existing, previously existing cell. A cell comes from previously existing cell. That means a cell gives rise to a cell. So these are the three cell theories. I repeat, the cell theory. If so, one now asks you, state the cell theory. You are going to do it with the cell theory states one that every that every living organism is made up of cell, and two that the cell is the basic unit of life, basic structural and functional unit of life. That the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. And the third is that a cell gives rise to a cell, or a cell begets cell, or a cell comes from previously existing cell. So these are the cell theories. And I know you have got that. If you have got that, can we continue? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Now, we are going to look at scientists that propounded this cell theory. Scientists that propounded this th theory. Scientists that propounded the cell theory. You are going to be very careful here. Yes, somebody has listed the assignments. Yes. You say the first assignment lists 10 differences between living things and non-living things. Correct. Second assignment, draw and label a plant cell and animal cell. Correct. Third assignment, list 10 differences between a plant cell and animal cell. Correct. And fourth, List, uh, uh, okay, list 10 difference between plants and animal cells. Correct, these are the assignments I give you. So we are now on cell theory. Somebody can state, ask this question. I'm, I'm going to ask you, state the cell theory. That is one of the questions you are going to state, ask you in the exam. So you are going to answer the question in the exam. So the cell theory states that one, all living organisms are made up of cells. And two, a cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. And then third is that a cell comes from previously existing cell. Thank you very much. Somebody is even putting the, the question, the assignment on the on the notice. That's good. The, 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 the cell theory, which I just finished. I thank you very much. What you are just giving me, the feedback is that you are following. So now we are going to go to the scientists that propounded the cell theory is very, very important that you know the scientists that propounded the cell theory. Very, very important. Now, one of the, 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 one of the scientists that propounded the cell theory is Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke. Very, very important. In fact, Robert Hooke is regarded as the father of the cell. He's today regarded as the father of cell. Just like uh, Gregor Mendel is regarded as the father of genetics. And then in evolution, who is the father of evolution? Can somebody answer me? Who is the father of evolution? Charles okay. Darwin. Okay. Uh, yeah. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, very, very good. So all these things, all these specialized areas have people who propounded it. So, um, we are now going to list the scientists that propounded the cell theory. I said the number one is Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke today is regarded as the father of what? A cell. So, now, the second person that propounded this cell theory is Theodore Schwann. Theodore Schwann. Theodore Schwann. The spelling has to be correct. Theodore. T H E O D O R. Theodore. T H E O D O R, Theodore. Then Schwann, S C H W A A N. 
S C H W A A N T O D O S H O N. Very very important. So I've mentioned two scientists that propounded the said theory. One is Robert Hooke. The second person is Theodore Schwann. Then the third person. The third person is Matthias Schleiden. Matthias Schleiden. Matthias. We spell Matthias. Matthias is M-A-T-H-I-A-S. M-A-T-H-I-A-S. Matthias. Then Schleiden. Schleiden is S C H S C H L E I D E N S C H L E I D E N Matthias Schleiden. It's good that you know this. Matthias Schleiden. In the exam, if you fail the spelling, you fail. I'm very critical of that. You must know the spelling. Sorry, the first person we mentioned. Okay, I repeat the last, the third person. From the yes, I think from the first. Sorry. Okay, the first person we mentioned there is Robert Hook. Robert, R E R O B E R T. Robert, R O B E R T. Robert Hook. Hook is H O O K E. Hook, H O O K E. Robert Hook. That's the first person. The second person is Theodore Schwann. Theodore Schwann. I've mentioned that. The third person is Matthias Schleiden. Matthias Schleiden. That's the third person. Then the fourth person. The fourth person is Felix Dujardin. Felix. Felix Dujardin. Felix is F-E-L-I-S. Felix. Then Dujardin. D J D U. Sorry. D U J A R. D I N D U J A R D I N Felix Dujardin. Have you got it? Have you got it? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Matthias Ledin. The fourth one again, spell it. Okay, let, let me finish. When I finish, I, I will take it from the beginning. Uh, when, when we finish, then we take it from the beginning. I will finish and then we take it from the beginning again. Are you following? So, the, the, the first person is Robert Hook. The first person is Robert Hook. The second person is Todd Oshwan. Todd Oshwan. And the third person is Matthias Shilaidi. Yes, yes Matthias Shilaidi. Matthias P-H-I-A-S. M-A-T-H-I-A-S. Matthias Shilaidi. Shilaidi is S-C-H-L-E-I-D-E-N. Is it, so is it N or R? S-C-H-L-E-I-D-E-N. D E N. Okay, can we move? Can yes, we continue? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then the fifth, pe fifth person. Yes, sir. Fifth person. Please, you push to mute your mic, I beg. The fifth I person. Please, please mute your mic. Mute your mic so that we can pull. The fifth person, the final person, the fifth person is Rudolf Volvicho. Rudolf. Mm -hmm. Rudolf Volvicho. R U D O L F. Rudolf. R U D O L F. Rudolf. Then Von Vichu. Von Vichu. V O N. V O N is Von. So Rudolf Von. The next one is Vichu. V I R. V I R C H O W. V I R. C H O W Rudolf von Vichu. Rudolf von Vichu. So in the exam, I'm going to ask you list five scientists that contributed to the development of cell theory. That is the question in the exam. List five scientists that contributed to the development of cell theory. That's the question I'm going to ask you in the exam. 
Can you do that? Yes, Very well. Sir. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Very yes, sir. Well, definitely. Sir. So now let's do a kind of recap. Let's uh, summarize what we have done today. Let's do a recap of what we have done today. Because Sorry, we have sir, done at least five sciences that contributed to the development of what? Cell Cell theory. Theory. Cell theory. That's for the journal. Can, can we can we now uh, summarize what we have so far we have done? The first yes, thing we sir. did was for to those look of at us who are doing journal. You say? I said for those of us who are unable to join on time. Why, uh, why yes, you yes, why yes, you yes, you want to summarize it to come. carry to, to What carry do you mean, why are we can just joining? Uh -huh. down. What do you I mean? Say, I say, let me have a recap so that people, even people that join now can have an idea of what we did today. So we, we started by introducing living things. You are a living thing. I am a living thing. So living things are those things that have life in them. Unlike a pen, a pen is not a living thing. Phone is not a living thing. Your 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 phone is not a living thing. So that's what how we define living thing. And then non living things are those things that doesn't have life in them. Then we went forward to look at characteristics, characteristics of living things, up to ten characteristics. But I I use the an acronym so that you can remember anytime the characteristics of living things. So I use an acronym, Mr. D. Niger. Mr. D. Niger. M is what? For movement. Movement. R is for reproduction. Reproduction. D is for death. N is for nutrition. I is for irritability. D, D is for growth. C is for growth. Growth is for S is for what? Reproduction. Reproduction. And, the second, and the last R is for respiration. Sorry, sir. Can you please come again, sir? Okay. I say I use an acronym. An acronym. Yes, you know the meaning of an acronym? Something yes, you coin to Talk remember. Together. So I yes. use Mr. D. Niger. Mr. D. Niger. Mr. D. Niger. To represent these characteristics of living things. So M is for what? Movement. Movement. R is for what? Reproduction. Reproduction. D is for N. what? Death. 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 Yes. N is for what? Nutrition. Nutrition. I is for what? Irritability. Irritability. Then G is for what? Growth. 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 E is for what? Excretion. R is for what? Respiration. 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 Yeah. These are the characteristics of living things. Is that okay? Yes. So, now, we now want Sorry, to the last look hour, at this, the last hour. Respiration. respiration. Of course, respiration. must carry out the process of respiration. Don't you carry out a respiration? Yes, you have two types of respiration. You have external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration is breathing in and breathing out. You breathe in oxygen and give out what carbon dioxide. Is that not true? Then you also, sure, also sure. have internal respiration or called tissue respiration, which is the breakdown of what? Glucose in your body to so produce what? Carbon dioxide and energy. I hope you understand. So that one happen inside your cell. So this that every organism, every, every living organism must carry out the process of respiration. So I now ask you to uh, give us the differences between uh, living things and non-living things. That's how we stop there. Then we now went to a cell, to the cell. And we look at the definition of a cell. And we say that a cell is what? the basic unit of life or the building block of any living organism. Just as if you have a mansion or an upstate, you have used blocks to build that building. Without blocks, you cannot put up a thing. In our own case as animals or plants, there is a building block, which is what cells. So we say that cell is the building block of an organism or the smallest unit of life. Now, I now say that uh, uh, cells are found in plants and cells are found in animals. That cells in an uh, plants are called plant cells and cells in animals are called animal cells. Then I ask us to draw a plant cell and ask us to draw an animal cell. And then we say that we draw a plant cell and the plant cell has a definite shape. And when we draw a plant cell, 
the atmos covering is what we call the cellular cell wall. And the cellular cell wall is followed by what? The my uh, 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 followed by uh, an, another region called the middle lamella. Middle lamella or what we call yes, middle lamella is the second layer. And then the third layer is the cell membrane. Because of the presence of this cellular cell wall, you cannot touch a plant and it is soft. No, it's always very hard because it has the cellular cell wall. Now, when you come to the cytoplasm of a cell, then you have many things that are there. We mentioned the chloroplast, we mentioned the nucleus, we mentioned the nucleolus inside the nucleus, then we mentioned the, 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 the mitochondria, then you mentioned the Golgi apparatus. Then these are the things. Then you mentioned the vacuum. You mentioned the vacuum. These are the things found in the plant cell. Note the vacuum in a plant cell is very large. And because it is very large, that's one of the difference between plant cell and animal cell. A plant has a plant cell has a very large vacuum, but animal cell has a very small vacuum. So, then we now drew an animal cell. An animal cell is it doesn't have a definite shape because it doesn't have cell wall. It doesn't have cellular cell wall. It has a cell membrane. Then, after the cell membrane, then you have what? The cytoplasm. And inside the cytoplasm, you find the nucleus with the nu nucleus inside. Then you also have the Golgi apparatus. Then you also have the mitochondria. Then you also have the what? The centroids. This then you also have a nice These are the things found in a animal, animal cell. cell. Now, remember that division takes place in these cells. So you have, when you are born, you are very tiny. Remember the day you are born. You are just very small. But the cells in your body continue to divide and divide. So these cells can divide. So division that takes place in a cell is called cell division. So from one day old to one month old to two months old to six months old, division is continuously taking place. You understand? So the division that takes place in your body, of course, you have that types of two types of cell division in your body. You have what you call the mitosis and what? Meiosis. Then that is a lecture for next day. So we have looked at plant cell and animal cell. We have drawn the plant cell. We have drawn the animal cell. And then we now say, can we draw differences between a plant cell and animal cell? Yes. I ask you in an assignment to give 10 differences between a plant cell and animal cell. Let me mention some of them. I'm giving you S2. One is that a plant cell is what? has a definite shape. An animal cell do not have what? A definite shape. A plant cell has cellular cell wall. As atomos cover, an animal cell do not have a cellular cell wall. A plant cell has chloroplast or chlorophyll in them. Animal cell do not have a chloroplast or chlorophyll. A plant cell has a large vacuum. An animal cell has what? A small vacuum. A small vacuum. Yes. Uh, uh, an animal cell has a lysosome, but a plant cell do not have lysosome. Then put the remaining ones for us as the differences. Ten differences between plant cell an animal cell. And then, what are the similarities? I ask you to list the similarities. That is the B part of the assignment. What, what do they have in common? One, all of them have what? Cell membrane in common. They also have nucleus in common. They have vacuum. All of them have vacuum. All of them have mitochondria. Then all of them also have a, what? Uh, uh, all of them have a, a, Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies. And then all of them have cytoplasm. These are the things that are a common in plant cell and animal cell. Then from there, we now shifted to the cell theory. We now say, what is cell theory? We say some scientists sat down and propounded mm -hmm. cell theory. What is this cell theory? One, we say that cell theory states that every living organism is made up of cell. Two, that cell is the basic unit of structure and function of life. And three, a cell comes from previously existing cell. These are the cell theory. Sir, please come again. 
that one cell theory states that every living organism is made up of cell. And the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. And then the third is that a cell comes from previously existing cell. Now, from there, we now mention the, the scientists that propounded this cell theory. Scientists yes, that yes. contributed to the development of cell theory. We mentioned five of them. The first person is Robert, uh, Hooke. Robert Hooke, Robert who Hooke. happens to be the father of cell. Remember, after the discovery of microscope, I hope you understand. The next thing that was done is to discover a cell. Because this test, you can't see them with your naked eye. You can't see a cell with your naked eye. You can only use microscope to see a cell. So when the microscope was discovered by Lewin Hawk, then the cell was now discovered by Robert Hooke. So the first person is Robert Hooke. The second person is Theodore Schwann. Theodore Schwann. The third person is Matthias, Matthias Schiledi. The third person is Matthias Schiledi. The fourth person is Felix Dujardin. Felix Dujardin. Felix Dujardin. And the final person there is uh, Rudolf von Vichu. Rudolf von Vichu. He's a German scientist. And in fact, he is the one that discovered that a cell begets cell. That wherever there is a cell, there must be a pre existing cell. That was the person who showed this. So, today's lecture has been a very wonderful lecture. It is the first lecture yes. in the series, and we have been able to do justice to living organisms, and we have been also the, uh, able to do justice to the cell theory. So, these are what we are going to have how to have given you assignment. And then the assignment I gave you today one list the 10 differences between. Living organism and not living, living things and not living things. Two, draw and label a plant cell and an animal cell. Three, list ten differences between a plant cell and animal cell. And then be part of it is list five similarities. List five similarities in plant cell and animal cell. Come again in the assignment. Uh, please, if you can hear me, please. Uh, please, please if you can come, come again, again on the assignment, sir, please. Come yes. again on the assignment. Sir. On the assignment, somebody yes, posted sir. here on yes, the screen. Sir. And then here on the screen, I was, uh, we are looking at the, 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 we are looking at the assignment I gave you. The assignment I gave you, so I should, okay. Let me mention them again. The assignment Who do we even submit to, sir? Who do we submit to? Yes. Submit it to my email. Is that okay? Over your WhatsApp number. Okay, sir. So no, my email. The email, uh, the email that open your this thing, you see the email. Uh, do you okay, want to yeah. take it yeah. now? I have a question right now. My question is, what do you want to do your WhatsApp the assignment in our book? Okay, okay, take my email. I will call it. my email for you. I will call my email for you. Email. Excuse That's me, sir. Okay. I, will yes. you don't have your email. I want to call it for you. Sir, can we submit it on WhatsApp? Some people can't use email, though. Somebody yeah. like me. <laughs> now, <laughs> some of us have issues in our email. Okay, no problem, no problem. You, you can submit either in WhatsApp or my email. My email is, for those, that, for those that want to use email, let me call my email. I will type it there on the on the screen. I will type it on the screen. The assignment in our book and then make a screen. Excuse me, sir. I'm Hello, typing sir. my email on the screen. Sir. My, sir, my question is, are we to solve the assignment okay. in our book and then make a screenshot and then send it to you on your email? Look, who sends screen, uh, send screenshot on email? I, 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 you know they send pictures on email. I don't understand why you have Allow him to talk, talk now. Allow him to talk. 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 Allow him I if you stop it, please, can we keep quiet and listen to the lecture? And Let's get something from this to you on your email. That is my question. I'm not asking the student. So nobody to answer me. Please let the lecturer answer me. I beg rest, Joe. <laughs> what, I've, what I've asked you to do is you can send through WhatsApp or you can send through email. And my okay. email is, I'm, I've, se I've sent it to you. It is 
Chris dot Chris dot Chris and that's one as if you the one that we listen to some motif class of at unn dot edu dot ng. I will call it again. Chris, everything is small letter. Chris, that is Chris the same to the C H R I S C H R I S. That's Chris dot one n w a n i chris dot one at at u n n dot edu dot n g. My WhatsApp number. Somebody wants to know my WhatsApp number. We want to see your WhatsApp. Yeah, zero eight zero seven five zero. I repeat. Can you just chill so we can hear what? Zero eight zero three seven five zero nine nine one zero. Okay. I call it again. Zero eight zero three seven five zero nine nine one zero. Zero eight zero three seven five zero nine nine one zero. About the email, is it the same as the one you sent to us on? Yes, yes, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. So please, on the assignment where you said draw and level, please, are we going to draw it and then? Now, the the email is already on the screen. You can see it on the screen. I've typed it. Is that okay? Thank you. Someone asked a valid question about the assignment. Yes, so ask. I wish to do the assign, uh, assignment. You know, ask the valid question now. Yes, can you ask question. I'm I'm here for you. I said, are we are we going to screenshot it or we are going to write in a piece of paper and then send it to you? You said you don't know how to sign an assignment in soft copy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to sign, send assignment in soft copy. <laughs> use it. Use it. As answer the question of Google Doc and send. Use Google Doc or PDF. It has been a wonderful time with you. Yeah. you. So, same time yeah. next week by 3 o'clock. The same time next week by 3 o'clock on Thursday, we'll also discuss another topic. And then Please, take, the assignment. take serious, the take serious this what? assignment because oh, your, your assignment will be completed, completed as your continuous assessment. So I did not get the assignment because people were making noise. I did not get it, sir. It's on the platform. Which platform? Is it as a Google Doc? I'm so honest. The assignment. Take a screenshot of it. We can't draw. God bless you. Is there a limited? Is there a limited day for us to complete this assignment? Yes. Is it before next week? Before before next contact, you submit it. Oh, okay. One next contact. I, I'm giving you six days to submit it. Six days. Only six right, days. Sir, okay. sir, 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 I have a question. Can someone just submit it to us on the, on the group? Six days. Sir, should we create a WhatsApp group chat? Sir, you can create it. Better create it. You created already now. Okay, 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 is in the platform, so you can access the lecture notes in the platform. I've attached the lecture notes in the platform, you can uh, assess it. Uh, is this class recorded? Of course, it's recorded. I'm going to also uh, put uh, attach the recorded uh, version on your on your, on your WhatsApp. Is that okay? Yeah, we move the out okay. Us, yeah. Yeah. On the platform, I'm going to drop the, the, the recorded things in the something on the platform. The recorded lecture will be on the platform. So Thank I you. wanted to know how, how the assignment okay. will, be, will be submitted. I don't get to see anything. Ah, what, what is there? I've asked you to do, I think, 
three assignments or four assignments. Yeah, you do, do it as you draw. You cannot submit through email. Oh, but I draw it. We have to draw it on WhatsApp. paper first, Thank then you. send it to you. You can't draw it on Google Doc. Thank you. I'm going to exit. So I don't go now.